Hi, I'm Don Smith. I am now in my second year of being a board member for the Heritage Harbor Master Association. It's referred to as Heritage Harbor, which I believe was just uh, the logo. You can see the lighthouse uh, as you come in off of 64, and that greets all the residents when they come in. Uh, as you further go down um, that street, you'll see the actual lighthouse. We received a, uh, a grant, and I received that through meeting uh, Charles Reith, and the grant was for plantings, aquatic plantings, 3,000 of them, in the pond that is closest to the manatee. And the purpose of the plantings were uh, to take the nitrogen out of the, the water before it goes into the Manatee River, causing red tide. Um, as a result of that relationship with Charles Reith, uh, we were fortunate enough to become aware of his project about 10 miles away, which was a, another microforest. I'm Charles Reith, and I'm the project director for the microforests. I am an ecologist and have had the pleasure of working in many different aspects of environmental science. A microforest is a very dense planting of all native species, many different native species, in a small area, as small as two-tenths of an acre, which is about the size of a baseball diamond, or really no larger than 0.6 or 0.7 acres, which is the size of a whole baseball field. So it's a small, fast-growing forest. So the whole microforest concept arose through the mind of a brilliant Japanese botanist named Akira Miyawaki. He said, if we plant species really close to each other, different types of trees and shrubs very close to each other, they will experience shade stress. They will sense biologically or hormonally that they need to grow fast or else they'll get shaded out. So Miyawaki's extraordinarily dense planting strategy stimulates trees through shade competition to grow so fast, we often say that a Miyawaki microforest turns into a 100-year forest in just 10 years of growing. The key term is high performance. Microforests grow really fast. And because they grow fast, they deliver the benefits of forests, of a growing forest, in a very high performance or powerful way. The biggest benefit is intercepting water and preventing flooding and coastal pollution by stormwater carrying off pollutants. If you have a super fast growing forest transpiring all that water to the atmosphere, then you're deriving a real benefit. The same thing goes with the carbon capture against climate change and providing wildlife habitat. Our forests are almost like thickets. They're deep, dense, and shady. And people say, and I've seen it with my own eyes, the number of bird species and other critters that are attracted into that forest are extraordinary because it is such a dense, vigorous, and inviting habitat. I think the primary benefits are that it gives us oxygen. It also provides a habitat for wildlife and it purifies our water. The microforest also gives off a, a cooling effect. Um, and it was amazing, a week after we did the planting, I went down and the number of tiny birds that are flitting from tree to tree was just heartwarming. So the collaboration for the microforest at Heritage Harbor began with a wonderful collaboration several years ago between Florida Veterans for Common Sense, Solutions to Avoid Red Tide, and the Rotary Club of Sarasota Bay. All of those are nonprofits with a common environmental mission, and they came together and planted microforests at four different locations. And we brought all these resources to bear with a fabulous result at Heritage Harbor. My name is uh, Gene Jones, and I'm the president of Florida Veterans for Common Sense. And uh, my job is to help coordinate the many projects that our group does. I was involved with the project uh, working with uh, Dr. Charles Reith and uh, 
Charles and I met with the uh, Heritage Harbor Homeowners Association and we presented the information about the microforce. They were already sold on it. We really didn't have to sell them. They knew what it was. But we saw these articles about the microforce and we, we knew the trees sequester carbon and one of the main drivers of climate change is carbon in the atmosphere and trees are one of the best things that we can do to take carbon out of the atmosphere and sequester it in the soil. But there's actually more carbon sequestered in the soil, in the roots and around the roots in the trees. I mean, trees are just a wonderful mechanism for sequestering carbon. One of the pleasant surprises about these microforest projects is the positive impact that it's had on the veteran community from what I've observed. And those veterans really benefit from these microforests. For one thing, it's a good reason for them to get outside and do something productive. And it makes them feel better. And some of this work to put in these microforests, some of the work is hard manual labor. There's no other way to get around it. And I thought, people are not going to want to do that. We're going to have to hire all this labor. But no, it's been a pleasant surprise. Some of the veterans, they enjoy doing it. It's good for them. The exercise is good for them. The camaraderie is good for them. And that was an un unanticipated surprise of a benefit from these microforests. The project started off uh, with collecting of cardboard. It was housed in the lighthouse that we, we spoke about. And uh, for laying of the mulch, the master gardeners of Manatee came out in force. My name is Alyssa Vinson. I'm the residential horticulture agent at the UF IFAS Extension Office in Manatee County. The Master Gardener Volunteer Program is a collaborative partnership between the University of Florida and local county governments where volunteers work with county horticulture agents to provide research-based information to the public. Uh, it's been around since 1979 here in uh, Manatee County, but the program originated in Washington State in 1972. Master Gardener volunteers go through an intensive 12-week training course. Um, they apply to become a volunteer, and then the local county extension office provides training. The training includes everything from um, botany, entomology, soil science, integrated pest management. Here in Florida, we, we specifically train people in Florida-friendly landscaping principles. And so we work a lot on these different skills so that the volunteers can go out into the community and they can provide good solutions for people's lives and landscapes. My name is Lonnie Reddy. I'm a Master Gardener volunteer in Manatee County. Challenges at Heritage Harbor were uh, uh, actually very few. It was well planned. Uh, it was well thought out. Uh, the, the location was perfect. And I think that one of the things that made Heritage Harbor go so smoothly was that that was either the fifth or sixth microforest that, was be, uh, uh, that had been done. Well, cardboarding is a very important part of microforesting. We use it to form the base of the mulch bed that creates the forest floor. And it was very exciting to us when the Rotary Club, our district of Rotary, called me and said, hey, we are bringing tons of cardboard boxes of supplies down south of Sarasota to deliver relief to people in the hurricane affected areas. People after Hurricane Ian who needed everything from you know toilet paper to food supplies. So they said, can you use our cardboard when we're done? <laughs> and I said, that's heaven sent for me because we, when you sheet mulch, the best cardboard you can get is big broken down boxes. So they arrived on mulching day with a, a big trailer behind a pickup truck full of all this perfectly broken down sheet mulch cardboard and hands to help lay it. And wow, I just said, how cool is this? Taking cardboard that packaged relief supplies for Hurricane Ian folks, for people affected by that, and now giving it a permanent life, a valuable life, as the cardboard element in our sheet mulch for this microforest. 
the master gardeners of Manatee came out in force. It was an entire day of laying it, staking it down. The purpose of that was to better prepare the soil for when we dug the holes and put all the, the plants and shrubs and things like that in. Now that you mentioned cardboard, that was actually one of the biggest challenges at Heritage Harbor was assembling the amount of cardboard. Uh, and I don't think that anybody realizes how much cardboard it actually takes to properly uh, cardboard for a microforest, a half an acre. And that was, uh, uh, that was a, an effort by Rotary to secure enough cardboard. Master Gardener volunteers were going around to various locations and uh, uh, begging for cardboard. My name is Zach Zildjian, and I am an ecological landscaper. I specialize in native and edible um, landscaping, and I've been working with SURF, Sun Coast Urban Reforesters, to um, manage their microforest projects and have been the lead organizer in the um, implementation of the plantings. So at Heritage Harbor, um, we recently got in touch with a company called Veranza, who has worked with us um, and was really willing to help us out. And so they donated all the mulch for us. We just had to pay delivery fee. Um, but they have different um, types of mulch. They have like uh, yard waste mulch that was um, just a mixture of palms and leaves and wood as well. And then they had like a purely just like big chunk wood mulch and that's originally what we wanted was just the wood mulch but the first couple loads we got were was the yard waste mulch which wasn't bad actually because it's um it locks up onto itself so it really created a barrier that like helped suppress the weeds although it is harder to work with it's harder to spread out um, and move ourselves to get trucks in there to drop mulch that was one of the main concerns was whether the big semi trucks were going to be able to drive into the site and dump and not get stuck. Um, so that's one of the big concerns that we always, you know, need to be aware of. Um, and then other than that, it was just getting the site prepped, like getting a machine out there and having the labor to spread all the mulch um, and then giving ourselves like about a month to let the whole site sit before we go in and start drilling holes. Well, when the, uh... The, the mulch arrived on a, a, a pretty windy day from what I recall. And uh, so it was, a, it was a bit of a challenge to lay the cardboard down and quickly get the mulch on top of it before the cardboard started to blow away. Uh, the, the mulch arrives by the dump truck load and is uh, distributed uh, into a, a large pile in the, the middle of the microforest area and then is spread out uh, individually uh, by wheelbarrow load at a time. So it was a, a long, uh, a good workout day. <laughs> uh, fortunately for us volunteers who were uh, being moving mulch by a, uh, via wheelbarrow, uh, the decision was made to uh, to get a front end loader and have Zach and his crew finish uh, spreading the rest of the mulch. I would say the volunteers probably did about 50, 50 to 60 percent of it uh, uh, but with shovels and wheelbarrows and uh, then the front end loader took over. Mulching is probably one of the hardest jobs that we do in building the microforce. I mean you have to move a lot of material and we've been fortunate that we've been able to do a lot of this really manual labor uh, with volunteers and uh, you could hire that done you could bring in a big piece of equipment to do that but it's good for the volunteers it's good for the camaraderie for people to do it and i would like to give those people a special thanks particularly some of the younger people i would like to say Thank you to all of those who came out for Cardboard and Mulching Day. Uh, and I hope that they all took away a sense of pride, uh, particularly because of how well the microforest is, is turning out uh, six months uh, in. Uh, 
I, I, I really, I hope that they all share the same personal satisfaction that, that I have from this experience. Well, I'm especially grateful to the people who come on Mulching Day. That's a little less gratifying in terms of instant gratification to, than coming out on Planting Day and putting the plants in the ground. The people who come out and spread cardboard and rake the mulch over the cardboard, their work is very, very important. And I must say, a completed mulch bed to the eye of this biologist is a beautiful thing. But not everybody's definition of beauty is that a big field of wood chips is a lovely thing. And uh, so I'm just grateful that people come out, they um, take my word for it on the scientific value of what they do, they work hard, and they're doing the hard work to make it possible for the really exciting planting day six weeks later to happen. So I have a special place in my heart for the people who help out on mulching days. So we, we waited about a month, and then after the, the soil was prepared, uh, we had a planting day, and we published that through the um, River Strand newsletter. Also, there is a Heritage Harbor uh, newsletter that we let everybody know so that they could participate. Um, volunteers came out. It was a tremendous success uh, based upon a whole lot of different volunteer groups. I think one of the best social impacts of a project of this nature is that it draws the community together. I mean, I don't know because we didn't do any kind of surveys about people's political opinions. But I would suspect there's probably conservatives, liberals, who knows what. Nobody really cared because we're all pitching in, doing something good for our community. On planting day, I arrived, uh, uh, got there pretty early, and uh, there was a lot of anticipation when everyone saw how big the task was. Uh, it's not until you see all of those plants unloaded from all of the trucks and placed uh, beside the holes ready for planting that you realize the scale of uh, installing 1,800 plants. I would say I was as pleasantly astounded because I didn't count the number of people that showed up, but I wouldn't be surprised if it were over 100 or 150. I mean, it was like a bunch of little ants running around, and uh, it was just so gratifying to see that kind of support for a project of this nature. I mean, it just shows you, in my opinion, that the community is eager for projects where we can all work together on something so positive. I couldn't have been more excited and optimistic. The reason I was so optimistic is because Don Smith had been the perfect host for the Heritage Harbor community. So I knew we had a lot of community buy-in. I also knew that we were going to have these schools coming and bringing young people to the planting process. And especially important is I had had the master gardeners involved. The master gardeners had attended even the early planting sessions. I gave a speech about microforests at their Christmas banquet. And just you could see in their eyes how excited they were about microforests. And so I knew that they were prepared, they were looking to deliver value. So they showed up en masse. Here come all of these citizens, many of whom are young from these schools. And the, uh, the master gardeners had actually prepared a little training worksheet uh, to teach all of the arrivees on how to do their job. And then finally, Zach, who is the hands-on guy on the microforest, Zach uh, has gained experience like the rest of us, and he, he has greater confidence and knowledge. So all of us were just pumped up that we knew this was going to be a really great forest. And indeed, the planting day, 1,800 plants in four and a half hours of nothing but fun. Can it get any better than that? I think that microforests are a great way to get the community engaged in the act of planting trees and celebrating green space. 
I know from listening to the Master Gardener volunteers who are involved that spending time with 65 school children planting plants is something that you, you really can't beat that experience. Planting day is a lot more fun than mulching day. And uh, on planting day, the, the biggest thrill for me was to see the young children planting those trees because they're really going to be the ones that are going to benefit from it. I mean, at my age, those trees are never going to be the age and the size that I will really benefit from it like they will. And they were just excited to be planting those trees and they were enjoying it. Um, yeah, it was super inspiring to see all the kids out there um, and just thinking about what they were getting out of it, getting their hands in the dirt. Um, I feel like that's not really super common these days for kids to be like planting and playing outside um, like they used to be, you know, decades ago. So I think that was just really special to give um, them an opportunity to not only like just have their hands in the soil, which itself I think is beneficial and therapeutic. We need more kids to be doing that type of thing. And I think that it's really important for kids to learn how to plant and learn about plants because we can't live without them. Planting Day was a really, it was a great success because of the turnout we had from a couple different schools that came out, specifically the Mangrove School um, and um, a school that I've been working with to plant a food forest on their property, Newgate. We as master gardeners didn't know a lot of who was going to show up. And so we had uh, two ladies that work in our, our children's program go talk to uh, the group of kids from the mangrove school. Well, it turns out those kids knew more about plants. Uh, the master gardeners were like, they could have taught us some stuff, I think. I really enjoyed seeing so many kids there on planting day and seeing the enthusiasm that they had for installing the plants, but uh, also how quickly they grasp the, the, the concept. Um, uh, Master Gardener volunteers did a, a, a brief introduction and uh, uh, training session, which it turned out, I don't think any of these kids needed any of the the introduction or training because uh, they came so well well prepared but their enthusiasm was just uh, was catchy uh, uh, they and just hearing their excited uh, uh, discussions that they were having about uh, getting the roots just right and, and putting the proper soil amendment in the, uh, on top of the uh, uh, native soil it, it was it was really uh, encouraging that that so many young people got it. I was also doing a wheelbarrow. Uh, uh, I was I was running uh, soil amendment back and forth. I know that the uh, the gentleman that was also doing the wheelbarrow is actually a parent of one of the kids. He had brought his kid there to drop him off, and ended up staying. Yeah, uh, and, and helping it. And he was a huge help because he was you know. Uh, 25 years younger than I am. Well, my action was the same thing that they were giving us, a big thumbs up. I mean, those, the kids, when you just see kids smiling and having fun and learning something and enjoy learning, I mean, that is so gratifying and reassuring. You know, we're all worried about the, the next generation, but when you see these kids that are doing something so productive like this, you know that all is not lost for sure. We had several large groups that made Planting Day a major success. Among them were the students at Ringling, the Sarah Bay Rotary Club, Solutions to Avoid Red Tide. We also had uh, food forest designs. Now, none of this would have been possible without financial contributions. And the three major contributors were First Climate Bank, Florida Veterans for Common Sense, and Verasa, which is a company that do donated all of the mulch. Uh, we had a whole lot of schools there and small children, including the Mangrove School, the Newgate Montessori School. You could tell that not only were they learning something from the exercise, but from the smiles on their faces, that they were just having a ball getting their hands dirty. I couldn't 
feel more moved, more touched than to see those kids out there. I had a very positive reaction to the kids being out there. It touched me to see the people out there contributing to the forest, learning from the experience, and gaining the ownership when in fact they're the ones that these forests are planted for. In the early microforests, all the Florida veterans who came out, and now they were the principal volunteers, they were all in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. And, you know, it's that great proverb, I guess, or parable that, you know, blessed is the man who plants a tree who will not live long enough to sit under its shade. Um, and that does apply, and I feel proud to be pushing these microforests, knowing they'll be around a lot longer than I will be. But seeing the kids be there and knowing that that's going to be a big forest someday, and they're going to bring their kids and say, you know, I barely remember it, but mom and dad told me that when I was in the fourth grade, I came out and planted this forest, and you be sure and tell your kids the same thing. That meant a lot to me. Talk about legacy, legacy effect. What a wonderful experience it was for us all. It was a beautiful planting day. We had done an exceptionally good job setting up for it in terms of the plants being delivered, the holes neatly drilled. We had, for the first time, given ourselves a full six week incubation period between the cardboarding and the hole drilling. We had the master gardeners. We had Florida veterans, including the indomitable Gene Jones, has so much capacity to get stuff done. And then we had the best host we could ever ask for, Don Smith, who also worked really, really hard. And a thousand thank yous to the master gardeners for being the presiding, prevailing expertise to distribute among all of those planters. What, what a wonderful day. It's one of the best days of my life. It's been a pleasure getting to know uh, the people from these various organizations. Um, the Manatee uh, Gardeners is an incredible group. I've attended the Rotary luncheons, and those folks are just the salt of the earth. And that's another reason that I love the uh, Microforce project, because that project shows that we all can do something positive and tangible that we can all see. When we started that project, people said, you are crazy. This veterans group is going to start planting Microforce. You're not going to be able to do that. People, people won't be interested in it, number one. Number two, they'll never turn out and volunteer and work on it. Well, guess what? They were dead wrong. My advice to anyone interested in planting a microforest in the future would be, don't hesitate. It's really a relatively simple process. Uh, there's no such thing as too small a microforest. If you've got a quarter acre, uh, even smaller, but a, a quarter acre can make an, uh, an incredible impact. They're not super expensive to do. So it, it, any place that there is turf grass right now that's being mowed, fertilized, irrigated, uh, is a perfect spot for a microforest and will yield tremendous, uh, uh, tremendous benefits over turf grass. We want to encourage every community to have a microforest if they would like to have one. And the Heritage Harbor Homeowners Association came to us and asked us if, if we would help them plant one. They'd heard about our other microforests and other projects that we had done. And we said, certainly. I mean, there's such a benefit to them, we couldn't pass up the opportunity. So we worked with them to uh, build that uh, microforest. And I must say, I'll brag a little bit, out of all the microforests that we've done, I would say that it turned out to be the best one. It is really going to be spectacular in a few years. In 25 years, I think it'll be very interesting to see how the site looks. Um, there's really no telling uh, how dense it will be or how big the trees will be. 
I have a feeling that some of those trees that were already on site were about 25 years old. So I think that a lot of the trees that we planted as, you know, two feet will be upwards of 40, 50 feet. And it'll just be, I mean, it'll be a pretty established forest. It'll be really cool. I would just like to say that uh, this project has been very um, fulfilling for me as a person, and I believe also fulfilling for our group as a person and the communities that we've worked with. Well, I think we've taken a, a major step forward in the, the microforest. Hopefully 25 years from now, people will look back and say, gee, they were good stewards. This is the most positive uh, endeavor that the board has ever done. I think we did a very good thing.